Today we're going to be doing something different on the show. We're going to be watching a college audition tape. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's nice. So you've got to think of the direction of the phrase. Where's the melody going? Is it appropriate to be like, oh, <laughs> for something that's like this big? I don't know. A lot of people rush this piece because they think it's like big flex or whatever, but it's, it's really taking its time. It's great. I think if I was on the university panel that was watching this video, I would be more than happy to welcome him to the percussion studio. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for yet another Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Marimba Maurice, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Sunshine Han, Scott Rader, Greg Harris, and Dean P. Newberger. Thank you so much for your continued support. And today's featured studio artist is Joe Smith. Thank you so much for your continued support. And if you'd like to become a studio VIP or a studio artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. Hope you've been well, hope you've been staying safe. Today, we're gonna to be doing something different on the show. We're going to be watching a college audition tape. Auditions are present in every stage of your musical life, whether it's auditioning for schools like colleges and universities, auditioning for bands and orchestras and DCI, and auditioning for things like musicals, or even auditioning for educational positions. I myself have done a lot of auditions in the last 10 plus years, whether it was things like, of course, auditioning for university, I auditioned for a few orchestras, I auditioned for every summer program that I attended, which was Two. And yes, I failed a lot of auditions and I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm no audition expert but I found that usually when you don't succeed at an audition or an exam or any sort of assessed performance, it's usually one of three reasons or even a combination of three reasons. Reason number one is not being prepared enough. So this is the most obvious one. It's just not practicing enough, not knowing your notes well enough, not memorizing the material properly. Reason number two, playing the wrong things. So maybe you prepared very well, like you know all of your music really well, but it just wasn't the right music for the situation. For example, maybe you're in a competition and the panel prefers really fast, really virtuosic music, and then you audition with a chorale and they're like nah and reason number three which is the one that affects everybody no matter how professional you are is nerves we've all been there before like you've done all your preparation and you're super focused and then you get to the venue and all of that is wasted because you are so nervous <laughs> shaking like man you accidentally play triple four day instead of piano <laughs> but the good news is every music educator will tell you the same thing there is one really effective way of fixing all three of these problems and it's simply getting other people to listen to you and more importantly getting those listeners to critique you which is why i was very very impressed to receive this submission from markel markel says here you have my video audition due to covid for college i'm 16 years old and from the basque country the pieces performed are as venturas by alexis gerasimes i still cannot pronounce his name vienna by david friedman etude number 45 by franz kruger and odessa by matthew lork hope you like it pd my excuse for the bad playing is the lockdown. No, but seriously, I think Markel is super brave for submitting his college audition tape to the show because it obviously isn't just going to be viewed by me, but also viewed by you guys. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to be watching this audition tape together. And I would love for you to leave a comment down below with your feedback on Markel's performance at any time during the audition tape. So if you think he did a really good job, please write that down there. I'm sure he'll be super happy to hear that. And yes, if you want to be like Markel and submit an audition tape to this show at any time or any performance that you've done, make sure you submit it at adjustandpercussion.com forward slash submit. Okay, let's watch. Okay, so here's the audition tape. And uh, we can see that it's a really nice wide shot of the room and we can see Markel is in the corner. He's going to start playing any second now. Can I just say that I really appreciate the composition of his audition tape. I know he's going to be standing right in the middle over here and we're going to be able to see him playing clearly, especially because it's side on and we're going to see all of his techniques. And this is just really great for the panel to see so that they know what to expect. And yes, one of my favorite snare drums is in the shot, the Pearl Philharmonic in aluminium, or should I say, Aluminum. Okay, so because of the length of this audition tape, I'm not going to be watching the whole thing without me saying anything and then watching it again. I'm just going to watch it and comment at the same time. But if you'd like to watch the full video without my comments, it's in the description below. Okay, here we go. As Venturas. This is a really good piece, you know, it really changed the way people perform solo central. I like that he's holding it nice and high. It also shows a lot of technique. Oh, nice. 
I like that his eyes are following the sticks too. That shows that he's being confident. He knows the music very well. Oh, look at that. Ooh, very nice. Yeah, so he's following over his eyes. Excellent. Oh, look at that wrist technique. Woo! Yeah, and it's basically half memorized. Okay, hold on a sec. So, you can see he's paying a lot of attention to the visuals. He's taking his time to draw the sticks up to the same height. And yeah, he wasn't really looking at the music that often. He's just checking the notes. So, that tells me he really knows what he's playing. Great start. And here's the SL. Really nice double stroke roll. Really controlled. Look at that. That was epic transition. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, nice rim shot. Really nice buzz strokes. Okay, good. I think it's really good. I think the sound is really good. I think the way he's buzzing and using all parts of the head uh, to draw out the dynamics is really nice. I think it would be slightly better if he had memorized it. I can tell that he's still turning his head back to look at the sheet. To his credit, he has actually stuck it together on this nice card. I'm always a big fan of big cards instead of having to do page turns. So anyway, let's keep watching. Really good soft playing. Mm. I can really hear the accents very clearly, that's good. Nice clean switch off. Here we go. Jazz comes now. I really like his conviction. He's not half-hearting any of these moves, which is good. Wow, look at that confidence. One of my favorite parts of this piece is this. Hey! Woo! Nice rim shots. Good hand technique. Again, I, I kind of wish that it, he wasn't looking at the sheet. That would make me believe in the performance a bit more, but it's still very good. Whew. That's nice. And he's not rushing at all, which is really nice to see. The brush comes in. I think that was a mistake, but that's okay. He's playing it off really cool, which I really love. Whew. Clean multiple bounces, that's good. Good. Good changeovers. Such good rim shots. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, 
Yeah, he's rushing a little bit. You see his left hand's rushing a bit. Really nice sounds though, like all the all the nice. A lot of good techniques going on. And remember, Markel's only 16. He's playing well above his age at this point. Oh yeah. Very nice rim playing. I love the sound he's getting out of the shoulder. It's really nice. This part is very controlled. He's not rushing this part at all. Very nice. Right in the pocket. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, good start for the buzz roll. But yeah, I like it when he's looking down like this, but then he starts to look back at the music again. Woo! Very nice double strip, man. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yes, with the slow rise up. That was awesome. And he held it for a long time too. He didn't just, he didn't just cut it off and then walk away. He held it and he put it down slowly. And then he was like, okay, now I'm done. And he's really taking his time. That's really like mature performance skills. I really like that. All right, so this is going to be Vienna by David Freeman. Now, again, I'm not a vibes expert. In fact, I'm not a snare expert either, but we'll do our best. <laughs>
this piece is not supposed to be a super flex. It's not supposed to be like super bright and in your face. It's supposed to be really nice and floaty and there are some textures that emerge out and they come back in. And he does a really good job of that when the dynamics are in the moderate level to the soft level. But when he gets to the loud part, I think sometimes in my opinion, he's getting a little bit too hard with the right hand. <laughs> Yeah, like that's just so nice. Yeah, otherwise that. See, too hot. That that was too hot. Go back a bit. When he's going for that octave, it's too hot. See, it's too it's too hot. So just relax that, and I think that would sound a lot better and be easier to hit. Yeah, that's also too hot. That's nice, that's good. Really good play there. <laughs> I like that airstroke, that was, that was a nice touch. Good dampening, nice one-handed roll. And beautiful finish. Oh, with the nice upstroke, slow upstroke and he's down. Fantastic. Yeah, so I think the main thing is for that one, just don't hit it so loud. The louds don't need to be that extreme, uh, but it depends. Maybe the panelists that you're going for, maybe they really like loud and fast playing, then maybe this wouldn't have been the right piece for it. But as I think a, a contrast to As Venturas, which was a very flex piece, you know, a lot of technique, very fast, this should have been like a nice melodic interlude. And so you don't need to go too hard on those um, climax sections. Okay, now we've got Etude number 45, which is a timpani. Solo, and then we have, of course, the old classic Odessa, which is the one that I probably know the most out of all of these pieces. Um, probably don't rely on my <laughs> feedback for this one. Uh, I like that he put the mutes there before he started, so that um, it didn't ring while he was playing the other pieces. At this point, he's still doing a really great job. Very, very mature renditions of all the music so far. I've heard this piece before. I've actually played this piece before. <laughs> nice. Oh, really nice finish. And then there's the fast part, right? Yeah. Nice crossovers. I like that his playing is pretty dry, which is nice and articulate. Wow. He's got great stick technique. Good on him for leaving the timpani to ring. I think he could have gone for a little bit of a brighter ballad. Um, maybe just something a little bit more articulate so we could hear it more. I heard a lot more, uh, what do you call it? Uh, resonance rather than skin sound for the second part of that. And I think it could have helped with a little bit more hard ballads. But I don't know, I'm not a timpani expert, so let me know what you think in the comments below. Oh, we've got a Studio 40, is it, is it called 44? This brand of Marimba, I haven't seen one before in any of these videos. Very interesting. Okay, we got Odessa. Let's do it, man. Let's make Matthew proud. <laughs> what are those mallets? Very well worn mallets. Nice small start. Not too fast, which is good. Careful of the octave. Ah, 
Ah, nice, really accurate. He's not rushing, which is really nice to see. A lot of people rush this piece because they think it's like big flex or whatever, but he's really taking his time. It's great. are a little bit on the hard side especially those top yellow ones we're really hearing like a very big sound i personally think it's a little bit too bright maybe something with a little bit more weight or just more more warmth to cut out that really sharp you know contact sound i think he could do with a little bit less of the slowdowns because he's slowing down at a lot of the phrases and it does like we've said in previous videos become a little bit predictable if you do it too often right now it's like right on the edge so i think it's still acceptable but yeah if you slow down too much in performances it might be misinterpreted as not knowing the notes or just not being ambitious enough to play the passage through so you just got to be careful with the balance of that So when you have hard balance like that in the lower register, it makes it very different sounding. But he's doing a good job, all things considered. And his laterals look really nice and even and, and smooth. He's still hitting on the edge of the E flat. I think he could totally go for the E flat all the way. There's a little bit of wrong notes there, but it's, it's all right. Okay, okay, again, so same thing like what we said with Vienna. There's no need for it to be so hard there. I don't think so. Like we haven't even reached the climax yet and it's already like da -da -da -da. It's very sudden. Um, so I think maybe just go easy on those those octaves like yeah We know octaves are exciting, but there's no need to play them like super loud each time um, Because what you're doing with the soft ones is really really nice. Okay, let's keep watching Triple laterals Triple lateral is too fast. It's it's um, it's crunching up in the right hand, I think. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think the right hand is crunching up too much and it's ending just before it's supposed to. And that's why there's a bit of an awkward gap in between. So I think you could spread out those triple laterals a little bit more instead of making them sound too fast. See how they're ending just a little bit too early? And he's having to cut each beat short. See, I always say with these triple lateral sections, like take them super slow first, like and then that way you can go without it sounding compressed. Also, his inside right mallet is a lot higher than his outside mallet. So even these one, two, three, fours, they're too compressed. Yeah, I think they're too compressed, so you spread them out a bit more. Right, here comes the chorale. Now, the reason why he's rolling so slow is because the mouths are so hard. <laughs> more, 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 more. Yeah, so yeah, if you use like heavier mallets that are a little bit softer, you'll be able to roll faster and then you'll be able to get more of that deep resonant chorale sound that I think is needed in this section to give that like, you know, warmth to it. And 
at least he is trying to vary the roll speed, which is, which is good. That's something more advanced that a lot of people don't do. He's speeding it up. Yes. More, 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 more. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of an accidental slide. Yeah, he's, he's trying to vary the speed. I can see that. So I appreciate it. But you see that right hand mallets? Yeah, they just they just make it sound so like do that do that do that do that do that do that. Nice soft control, that's good. And yeah, you could totally play on the resonator a little bit more. It's good pace though, good pace, good tempo. Yeah. this is subjective but I think that big raise there doesn't make sense this one it doesn't make sense for it to be there because it's not the end of the passage it's not a section where there's like suddenly a big change afterwards um, and I feel like the one after that is actually the more appropriate one to do this kind of thing because look this one I feel like that one would have been more appropriate just because it would have been like done Dun, 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 then you would have more drama and it just makes more sense in the context of where the piece is going in my opinion but anyway we're almost there let's watch to the end that's really nice <laughs> nice little touch uh, but actually I just noticed when he started that run like that that upstroke, that sudden jerky upstroke for such a tiny note, again, doesn't make sense, right? So try to reduce the big upstrokes because I used to do that a lot. I used to play big floaty upstrokes for every single note and then it, it doesn't make sense in a lot of contexts. So you've got to think of the direction of the phrase. Where's the melody going? Is it appropriate to be like, oh, <laughs> for something that's like this big? I don't know. Um, but yeah, let's watch to the end. Here we go, big flex. Nice. That is a really solid audition, if I'm being honest. It's a very solid audition. If I had to give it out of 10, I'd say it's a healthy 8 out of 10 for an audition where he's 16 years old and he's auditioning for college or university. This is a very, very solid audition. A lot of people would be happy with that. Yes, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the audition. I'm sure Markel would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well, especially about the things that maybe I'm not so good at, like things like snare drum and if you're enjoying the video so far please give me a thumbs up i'd really appreciate it okay so let's start off by seeing if he answers the questions of what i think a university panel would be looking for firstly his repertoire choice did he pick pieces that showcased all of his skills did he pick pieces that showcase each end of the extremes like soft beautiful music and loud flex music yes i think he did show us contrasting pieces he picked vienna which was a very nice soft beautiful piece uh, in contrast to as venturas and of course the etude is i mean it's an etude for timpani it just basically showcases timpani skill but it also has a slow movement and a fast movement and also odessa does have a pretty good range of dynamics and exciting moments and nice slow warm moments secondly was markel prepared for this performance did he look like he had practiced enough did he look like he knew everything he was doing absolutely i think this was one of the strongest points of this audition tape you can see that in odessa he's not using any music he knows all of the notes very well the accuracy is extremely high the etude he also wasn't using any music vienna he wasn't using any music and as Venturas, yes, he did use music, but he didn't look like he needed to rely on it too much. I would have liked if as Venturas was memorized, but it is a very long piece and it is very difficult. Now, did he know the pieces all the way to the molecular level? Well, I think for this college audition, he doesn't necessarily need to know it to like the competition level, which is where they nitpick every little detail. I think here they're looking for a more general picture. So I think for the purposes of this audition, it was totally fine. I think the amount of maturity that he showed, as I mentioned before, really shows that he's keen to learn and that he has a lot of potential. He's playing with all these advanced techniques that are peppered in throughout the more basic techniques, things like those upstrokes, things like you know following the stick of his eye like real performer sense and that's something that a lot of people don't develop until they're well past 18 years old 
and Marco is 16. So <laughs> I think if I was on the university panel that was watching this video, I would be more than happy to welcome him to the percussion studio. But yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments below. More videos where we watch auditions together. And if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads as I upload every single week. And make sure you hit that notification bell to know whenever I upload a new episode. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.